In this short video, I'm going to show you how you can model stormwater generated on a parking lot and how to define catch basins in HydroCAD. The first thing that I want to mention is that there is a video series on tutorials on HydroCAD, and there's a playlist. If you have not watched the playlist from the beginning, I highly recommend watching it because I'm going to build on top of the model that we have built in the previous tutorials. All right, with that explanation, we created the subbasin and then we added the reach or an opal cha open channel to the subbasin. Now what we are going to do, we are going to assume that the water that is created in the subbasin is going to be routed to um, a drain like this. You can see that this is a great inlet over here and right below this there is a catch basin that catches the water and eventually there is a pipe, a drain, an outflow drain over here. Okay, so we want to do that. We do have some information about the catch basin. We know the diameter of the cylindrical catch basin. We know the invert of the pipe right over here. And also we know over here the rim elevation or the surface of the ground over here. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do, we want to define that uh, catch basin. So I'm going to drag a pond over here and in HydroCAD, the name pond is associated to that, but we can edit this name and change the name to catch basin. So catch basin one over the pond type, I am going to talk about catch basin and detention pond. Okay, so first catch basin, take a look at that. It says that the pond with insignificant storage, this means that it does not consider any storage in our catch basin as it models this. Okay, so what you can do over here, if you click on outlets, you will be uh, asked to put the invert elevation of the outlet over here. So I'm going to double click on that and it gives me that what kind of outlet you have. So this is an orifice that I have over here connected to a pipe. So I'm going to click on orifice slash grates and then you can edit this name. I'm going to remove grate because this is an orifice and put some information over here. Invert elevation for my orifice is 902. And then discharge multiplier, I'm not going to change it. If you have question on what these number recommended numbers are, this one or discharge coefficient, you can always click on this help. And HydroCAD give you a lot of good information and what are the default values and what they mean over here. I'm not going to talk about that because this is a general video. As you can see, my orifice over here is vertical. So I'm going to click on vertical plane and then I need to put the diameter of this orifice and then the pipe, which for now I'm going to consider 12 inches or one foot. And that's all the information that you need to input for now. Okay, so I'm going to click OK and the information related to my outlets over here. Tailwater, um, depending on what tailwater situation you have, you can change this. Right now, my tailwater is going to be free discharge, so I'm going to keep it. And then advance um, over here, you can define a flood elevation. And this flood elevation is, for example, if the water in this catch basin goes over the grate over here, it's going to flood the parking lot, right? So my flood elevation in this example is 908. But I'm not going to define it right now because later I'm going to talk about it. Okay, so let's not define it for now. And then obviously notes, you can put all the notes over here. So apply and okay. Now I have a catch basin that doesn't have any storage associated with it, right? So when we were editing the characteristics for this catch basin, no storage was considered. Okay. Now again, I'm going to hover over this circle over here and hold my um, left mouse click and connect it to this one. Now for a two-year storm, if I run this, you can see that for a two-year storm, I had um, the peak flow of 4.17 CFS. Now I'm going to double click on my catch basin and you can see that uh, the hydrograph for the catch basin is also created over here. One quick point about the numbers over here. If your number, this 11P for you is 1P or 2P, that's absolutely okay. This is because I have been uh, working on this project to develop this video. So that's why my numbers are not in order. Okay. So 
Um, obviously, you can go to the summary and take a look at the elevation right now. 903 is the elevation. So essentially, we know that 902 was the invert and the pipe is one foot um, one foot uh, diameter and 903.72. That's why we got a hint that it peaked at 903.72. So just a little bit higher than the um, the top section of the crown of our pipe. Okay, this is the elevation at peak and lots of other information. And you can see the hydrograph, the discharge versus elevation, and the event, all the taps. Okay, now let's do something. I am going to um, change the diameter, or instead of changing the diameter, let's do this. I'm going to close this and change the uh, return period from two year to 10 year. Normally when we are designing this, we want to make sure that our structure is good for 10 year. Double click on that. Okay. And again, going to the summary, check or oh, the elevation is over here too. 906.36. So now it's closer to this 908, right? So let's change this to maybe 50 year and then run this again. The elevation is 912. Okay, now you can clearly see that this 912 at peak elevation is higher than 908, which means that this would be flooded. Uh, this parking lot would be flooded when we have a 50 year storm. Similarly, you can raise it to 100 year storm and you can see this information over here. Okay, now the problem is this method is good. It does consider um, catch basin but you do not have a lot of storage but we know that this area will keep some of the water right some of the water will be stored over here and when the elevation of water is higher than uh, the invert elevation of the pipe then you have some fluid going out of the system so we want to define some storage over here how do we do that first of all let me go back to two year and then if you right click and edit you can see there is another option over here called detention pond which considers the storage right so we're going to consider a catch basin that has a storage as well when you click on this you will see that the storage tab pops out let's click on the storage tab if you double click on this on any row it will give you different options right now i'm talking about a vertical cylinder right because my um, catch basin the catch basin looks like a cylinder so i'm going to model that click on ok the invert elevation is the elevation of the bottom of your catch basin in my case is 900. the bottom diameter of the catch basin is four feet for me the height of this uh, catch basin is from 900 to 908 so it would be eight feet and then there are no side slopes so it's a cylinder and everything else I'm going to keep the void as 100% because I'm going to assume that there is no mud and debris over here. If there is, you need to reduce this number. But I'm going to assume that this is a newly installed catch basin. There is no mud and debris over here. Okay. And then click OK. Now you have defined the storage for your model. The outlet in information is already saved because we had that uh, in our previous try. And then tailwater information and everything else should be the same now this time i'm going to define this flood elevation as 908 so the model automatically will tell me when um, flood elevation is there so here you can see that in previous run the model told me that it's advised to have the flood information in the model i'm going to apply and click ok first of all you saw that the color of this catch basin changed from gray to blue that means that i have storage in this one okay now for two year i'm going to double click on this to show the hydrographs okay so uh first thing i want to show you the discharge you can see that up to elevation of two uh 902 the discharge is zero why because it takes from 900 to 902 for this storage to be full and then it starts contributing to the outflow drain okay and this is the elevation of the orifice, the invert of the orifice that I have. All right. Now, take a look at the storage. The storage also here is, let me click on 2D. So we have the vertical cylinder. Because it's vertical, it's gonna, the storage is going to increase linearly with elevation all the way to 
the flood elevation. If I go back to hydrograph, it tells me that the peak elevation was 903.75, which is just a little bit higher than the pipe that I have. Okay, and this is the hydrograph. Perfect. And then in the summary section, you can find the information that I was talking about. So flood elevation, now it shows you the flood elevation and compares that to peak elevation that you get over here. Obviously, we want our design. The peak elevation should be less than flood elevation for the 10-year return period. So speaking of, let's change this to 10-year and the model runs again. You get a new hydrograph with a higher peak. Now take a look at the peak elevation is still less than flood elevation. That means our design is adequate. Now take a look at the storage again. You can see that the storage is increasing with elevation as well. Um, uh, this is discharge, elevation and discharge over here, and how it changes, and hydrograph. One thing that I highly recommend is right click over here and under report and select put the elevation over here too. This gives you a lot of good information. At different times when the hydrograph starts, um, the elevation of water in the catch basin starts rising very rapidly until it reaches the 902 right over here. Then because of this outflow drain, some water is going to be uh, going out of the system, the elevation goes higher and higher and higher. The maximum elevation is 906.35 um, when I have my peak uh, flood, and then it goes down and it stabilizes at 902, which is this elevation over here. All right, so there is a lot of information uh, that you can take a look at it and understand what's going on over here, depending on what you have so and also the event gives you all the elevations and all the information that you want to okay so now um the last thing that i want to do maybe let's do one large to make sure okay so this is large very large event a 100 year event and as you can tell the peak elevation is 917 917 is way above 908 that we have over here and that's why it tells you that the storage is exceeded by nine point five feet and we definitely do have flood situation when we have 100 year flood okay if i increase this to 10 year though we don't get that warning related to floods over here okay so this was a very a short introduction to how to analyze a very simple uh, sub basin a parking lot and how to analyze and how to define a cache basin that has a storage and also a cache basin that doesn't have in storage and you can change that setting right over here.